Um, I, hi, I love when people actually talk back. This is great, you guys are gonna be fun. Um, so I've actually never done a presentation this short before, so I gotta really fit this in. And I know there was mention of fireworks and all this crazy face melting. I don't have that. What I do have is a strategy so you never have to spend a dime on advertising again. Better than fireworks? I think so. Okay, so we're gonna dive into the video blueprint, a DIY guide to using video to build your business. But first, really, really, really simple question for all of you. How do you make money in your business? Sell something. Deliver something. It's, it's cool, guys. It's not like it's a timed presentation. It's fine. All good. <laughs> Just keep them flowing. Solving problems. Solving yeah. Providing value. Providing value. I like these answers. They're good answers. They're not the right answers, but they're good answers. So what we're going to do is work backwards. In order to actually sell something, which you're absolutely right, that's how you make money in your business. In order to sell something, you have to have customers. In order to have customers, people need to know about you, right? That's how it works. So wouldn't it be nice if you get completely free advertising that delivered three million potential customers in one year? Do you think I'm BSing you? You think I'm telling you the truth? <laughs> Most of the time people are like, yeah, okay, cool, I'm gonna tune out now because you're clearly lying. I'm not lying, this happened to me. Um, so I had a social media consultancy business for about five years based in Vancouver, Canada, um, and I loved it, worked by myself, worked with clients all over the world, big, small companies, totally happy to do it all by myself. And then got to the point where I had so many clients that I got really burnt out. And I decided, you know what, I really need to figure out a way to either clone myself or provide answers to all of my clients at once instead of sitting on the phone with them or sitting in a meeting with them. So I sat down in my apartment on my couch and filmed a tutorial video on how to use live streaming video for your business. And I uploaded it to my YouTube channel, which at the time had no subscribers on it. I wasn't planning on growing it. All I wanted to do was film this tutorial video, send it to all my clients, and have them stop asking me questions. I'm sure some of you can relate to this. So I sent out the video. The next thing I know, I have 1,000 views in the first day. Then I have 80,000 views on this video. And also, just one little side note. I was wearing pajamas from here down, um, and just a ratty old t-shirt. Hadn't washed my hair that day and really didn't put much effort into what I look like. Kind of a regret at this point. Um, but proves that value, as you said, is key. You provide value, you get results. So overnight, truly, I went from working with about 10 clients a year to being exposed to millions and millions and millions of people, all because of YouTube. It's led to press opportunities, building my brand, working with entrepreneurs all over the world, and being at conferences like this. So how do we do this for your business? And I work with companies of all different kinds, so I can cater this to any company, and that's what we're gonna do today. So to get the job done quick, part one is research. If you hit record before you do any research on what your audience actually wants, you might as well not shoot a video, because you will hear crickets. And as much as we all don't want to admit it, we all have a little bit of an ego, and when you get, you get no likes, no views, no comments, it hurts your soul a little bit. <laughs> it does. So kid, be honest about that. Part two is create content that converts. It's awesome to have a great video, but if you're not using that video to drive traffic to your business, again, it's kind of pointless. Part three is turning your potential customers into profit, so every single view on your video is a potential customer. They're watching it for a reason. No matter how boring the subject matter is, people are finding that video and watching it for a reason. So you wanna treat them as potential customers, so how do you take them from that viewer into actually being a paid customer and profit for your business? That's what we're gonna go over. 
So let's use a clear example on how this actually comes together. So I used to make uh, different kinds of videos and post them on my YouTube channel, basically just for friends and family, and I used to work in television, so I'd post my demo reel every now and then. And then I started doing vlogs. I started doing these weekly video vlogs, which is what vlog stands for. And I put so much effort into them. I had the perfect set, I had the perfect lighting, I had the perfect makeup, I had all the things I needed for it to do really well. It's providing really entertaining content, if I do say so myself. I thought it was great. And in three years, I got 430 views. Hurt my soul, I'm not gonna lie. And then, a full year later, is when I started making these tutorial videos on my YouTube channel. Again, had barely any subscribers on my channel, wasn't active on it, I completely had given up. But out of desperation of needing to find a way to answer these client questions, at one time, instead of having to be on the phone with them, I sat down and started filming tutorials. So this is one of my first tutorial videos. This video, as you can see, now has over a million views. So in less time, I got 2,641 times more views because I followed the strategy that I'm gonna tell you today. And it's all about listening. Someone asked me backstage, what's the biggest mistake companies make when it comes to video? And I said, buying into their own BS and making a video that they think is really good, which I am equally as guilty of. Because if you think it's good, it doesn't necessarily mean your customer will care or your potential customers will care or you'll be found by millions of people and make your sales process very easy and eliminate having to pay for advertising. So let's take a look at a case study. Lowe's, everybody knows Lowe's in this room? Home improvement store, yeah. Okay, so how did they find a great video topic? And you're gonna be very surprised as to what it is. Um, first things first, and this is the exact strategy to follow. So if you wanna take a photo of this, whatever you wanna do, feel free. The exact strategy to find content that actually converts, you have to start with frequently asked questions. That is the key. That's gonna provide profitable topics for you to create video content around. And also, keep in mind, this applies to all social content. So you can use these frequently asked questions to create Instagram posts, Facebook posts, because you know people are searching for them, they want answers to these questions, they want to solve a problem, you're providing that solution, you're providing that answer. So frequently asked questions. Who here in the room has frequently asked questions in their business that you get all the time? Pretty much everyone in here. So start making a list of those. All right, so this is on Twitter. Bill Coleman says, highlight of the day, totally random guy. Highlight of the day, went to Lowe's and bought a toilet seat. Maybe for tomorrow's excitement, I install it. So Lowe's sees this tweet. That's clue number one. Okay, there's a need to figure out how to install a toilet. Community hubs and competitors is step two. What does that mean? It means looking at other places that have a similar target audience to you and seeing what kind of content they create that's doing really well with their audience. So in this case, looking at the Home Depot. Their number one most popular video on their YouTube channel is how to replace or install a toilet. I bet you did not think that this is where this is going. So another clue here, guys, is if you go to a YouTube channel and you look at their subscriber count versus their most popular upload, that's a really good indication of where the viewers, views are coming from. So they only have 139,000 subscribers. Not only, that's a lot. But this video has over a million views. So they're being found in search because there's a need for this content. And Home Depot is solving the problem. So therefore, when these people are sitting there and thinking, oh crap, I gotta, literally crap. I gotta, <laughs> kudos to myself on that one. Um, <laughs> I gotta figure out how to install a toilet. They're seeing that the Home Depot is providing the solution, so who do you think they're gonna go to when they need the parts, or, or if they don't wanna do it themselves and they say this is too much work, who do you think they're gonna call? They're gonna go to Home Depot. That's how it works. So the next thing is the YouTube and Google search bar. This is really, really simple. This is such an easy trick that you can start doing right now. You go to Google, you go to YouTube, you type in the first three words of whatever it is that you're thinking about making a video around based on the FAQ and your community hubs and competitors. And the first 10 suggested searches are the most highly searched topics 
around those words. So right there, you have 10 potential topics. So you can do a video on all of these, how to install a dishwasher, a door, bathtub. The next step, and the most important, is verifying that you have a really great content topic that is going to be watched and found by your potential customers all day, every day. And that's Google AdWords Keyword Planner. And this is really simple. If you look up how to install a toilet, right here it tells me that there are 9,900 people every month looking for this topic. So you have a built-in audience. All you have to do is go to Google Keyword Planner, type in your keyword, it'll tell you the exact search volume per month for that topic. All right, so we have a really great topic. So let's take a look. So, it's time to replace your toilet. I know, it's probably not your favorite job, but hey, it's easier than you think. To start, most new toilets come in standard sizes that are easily swapped out, but if you're in an older home, it's a good idea to check first. Just measure the distance between the closet bolts and the wall, not the trim, the wall, to make sure it'll fit. And for tight spaces, measure to the side walls. Take these measurements to Lowe's to get a toilet that fits your bathroom. Once you have your new toilet, you can pull the old one. Now we've been remodeling this bathroom. We took out our old toilet before we removed the old tile. Here's what to do. Turn off the water supply. Then flush and hold the handle to drain the water from the tank. The little bit of water left in the bowl can be removed with a plastic cup or sponge. Next, disconnect the water supply from the tank and remove the nuts from the closet bolts. Now the old toilet is ready to come out. You can set it in a garbage bag before you take it away. With the toilet gone, place a rag in the drain to block sewer gases. Then use a putty knife to clean off the old wax ring. If the closet flange is rusted, replace it. Okay, now it's time to install the new toilet. Insert new closet bolts in the flange if you haven't already. To prep the bowl, gently set it upside down on a cloth and lightly press a new wax ring over the outlet. Ready for installation. Now you can remove the rag. Line up the toilet with the bolts and lower it. Press down around the toilet to seal it against the drain. Make sure it's square to the wall. Place the cap base, washers, and nuts on the closet bolts. Tighten them, but not too tight. You might crack the toilet. Alternate between each side as you go. If the closet bolts are too long for the caps, carefully cut them with a the hacksaw, then put on the caps. Bowls in. Now with two-piece toilets, the tank goes on in almost no time at all. Most new toilets have the flush assembly and handle installed, but if yours doesn't, now's the time to do it. Then, install the bolts and the rubber gasket. Set the tank in place and secure it with the nuts. Just hand tighten them for now. Check that it's level. Then tighten the nuts just enough to make a watertight seal. We're in the home stretch. Connect the water supply and slowly turn on the water. Check for leaks around the supply lines and gasket and make adjustments if you need to. Then attach the seat. Flush the toilet a few times and look for leaks around the base. Seal around the base with latex caulk. Set the top on the tank. And you're done. That wasn't so bad. We've still got some work to do in this bathroom, so be They did it perfectly, and that is some dry content. But they have a million plus views. So if you're sitting there thinking, well, I don't know why I would do video because the content topic that I'm gonna create is gonna be really boring, there is someone out there, if you're paying attention to the frequently asked questions in your business, there is someone out there or a million people out there waiting for you to, re to make this content to help them solve a problem and then they become customers for life. Because I don't know about you, I watched that video and I thought, okay, I could probably do this. Don't want to probably want to hire somebody instead, and I'm probably going to go to Lowe's because they helped me. They solved the problem. So how do you create the content that converts in the actual scripting and editing process? It is this simple. This is the exact script formula to follow. So you'll notice that in that last video, they got right into the content, right into the steps of how to do what they're telling you in the title, how to install a toilet. So how to shoot, script, and edit your videos for maximum results and exposure? You have to have a really short intro because people aren't searching for your business, they're not searching for your brand, they're searching for an answer to their question or a solution to their problem, they just happen to stumble upon you. 
So you need to provide it within the first 20 seconds or else they're going to go to the next result, which there will be. So the next thing is, tease the outcome for the viewer. So you do a, a short 20 second intro, and then you tease the outcome for the viewer. So you say, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to get more views on YouTube, or I'm gonna teach you how to install the toilet. So they know they're in the right place and they're not gonna tune out. The next part is the explanation, sequential steps, pretty self-explanatory, exactly what they did there. And then two calls to action at the end. The first call to action, is how you leverage video for your business. So you're driving viewers to your website or you're driving viewers to your store. You're turning these viewers into actual customers. The second call to action is engagement. So asking for subscribes, likes, comments, shares, because the more that you get of those, the higher your video ranks in search, the more people find you. So final step, step three, potential customers to profit. Is this making sense so far? Awesome. How are you actually converting your viewers to customers? So I gave you a few examples there. But if, if you are an online business, you wanna create an online database. Checklist, cheat sheet, guide, ebook, Facebook group to paid offer. So whatever you're saying at the end of your video, you wanna be offering one of these three things. So say you're doing a video on how to install the toilet. You can say, below this, I actually have a step-by-step -step checklist to make sure you don't miss any steps when you're doing this. People go download that, they get added to your customer database, your email list, and then when you have something to offer them that's paid, they're right there on your list. You've captured them. Offline business, website, store address and telephone number, discount code, free consultation. These are all ways to turn your viewers into potential customers, to take them from just watching your video to actually doing something with your business and not just forgetting about you after you've solved their problem. So let's take a look at how this actually works in the real world. So I work with a, one of my clients, and my students actually, um, is an interior designer. So we got her ranking on page one of YouTube for a bunch of different topics in the interior design space. So here she is, she's doing this, she's capturing her, her viewers and putting them on her email list um, and providing contact information in every video. So she's building her customer database with every video and people are finding these videos all day, every day. The next thing you know, she decides to create an online course. Sell an online course. This is the message I got from her. Oh my God, my beta course sold out in less than 24 hours. When we first started working together, she had no audience online. She had no real business model. And now she has leads coming to her all day, every day because she's doing this strategy the right way on YouTube. She's collecting targeted potential customers and seeing results. So what do you need to do this effectively? What do you need to create video effectively? A window. Natural light is the best kind of light. Don't worry about your lights, don't worry about your set. Worry about the value of the information that you're providing and getting into it as quickly as possible. A phone or a webcam. I started with a Logitech C920, it's the best webcam out there and it's about $80 on Amazon. iMovie, you can use that to edit and it doesn't take a genius to figure out how to edit with iMovie, it's very plain and simple. A YouTube channel and a can-do attitude. You've got this, it's really, really simple. So, I just wanna drive this home. Creating video that actually works for your business is not about, look what I can do. That's the biggest mistake businesses make. They create videos because they think they're good. So this is a prime example of that. This is a heating and ventilation company based in Vancouver. I blocked out their information because it's embarrassing. Um, and this is a video that they posted on YouTube. Spoiler alert, that goes on for five minutes. That's it. So don't do that, please. I know you wouldn't after this, but don't do that. Instead, this is perfection. And again, you may be thinking, I have nothing to create videos about. This is about how to light a pilot light on a gas fireplace and 100,000 people have watched it. So let's take a look at how they did this and notice that they have their phone number in the title so that people can go from watching this to calling them to becoming a customer immediately.
Hey everybody, Alicia from Canada Furnace here, and today we're going to show you how to turn your pilot light on and off on your fireplace. First, we're going to show you how to turn your pilot light off on your fireplace. If you look down here, there's a knob that says off, pilot, or on, with a little arrow to let you know which setting that it's on. You just need to push it in, turn it to pilot, and release for a second. Do the exact same thing, push it in, turn it to off, and release. And there you go. Now we're gonna show you how to turn your pilot light back on come the winter time. Again, if you look at the knob that says on, off, or pilot with the arrow pointing to the setting to let you know which setting that you're on, push that in and you're gonna turn it to pilot. From there you have to hold it in and press the spark button to the right until you get a light. We'll hold it there for about 10 to 20 seconds or so. And then you're going to slowly release a little bit, turn it to on, and there you go. Your pilot light is on. Just to let everybody know, this haze that you can see here on the glass on the fireplace probably means that you need to have your fireplace serviced as if you leave it like that, it could be permanently there. So give us a call. We're more than happy to come out and service your fireplace. Again, my name's Alicia, the office manager at Canada Furnace. Thanks for watching. Perfection. Starts with a short intro. Teases the outcome, tells the viewer exactly what they're going to learn. They're going to get their problem solved. Goes through the steps, really simple, very clear. Final call to action. Give us a call if you want us to come out and fix your fireplace. And has the phone number. Perfection. And 100,000 potential customers have watched that video, which has turned into real customers for their business. So everybody talks about going viral with video. That's not what you're after. Going viral means casting a really wide net and just wanting to get random viewers from all over the place. What you want is to get a targeted audience of potential customers. It doesn't have to be huge. It has to be targeted so they'll actually want to take action with your business. So how I define, define viral is creating valuable content, as you said. Creating content that helps people, solves a problem, answers a question, inspires them into action, is relevant to your target audience. So if you're Lowe's, you don't want to be doing cat videos. It makes no sense. It's not going to do anything for your, video, for your business. And it has to be authentic to your brand, and it has to be leveraged for your business. There has to be a call to action at the end to take your viewers from being just viewers and forgetting about you to being potential customers. So I wanted to show you a few results of how this actually works. So these are a few of my students that have gone through. So one of my students started with 50 subscribers on YouTube. She now has 50,000 in four months. In her, one of her first videos, she hit 30,000 views. She's been asked to speak all over the world. She's booking clients left, right, and center. And she teaches people how to get hired. That's what she does for a living. So she's grown really fast. Another one of my clients is a therapist. She's gone from zero to 5,000 subscribers in just a few months. And again, her practice is booming. Sorrow trains dogs. He's a dog trainer, and he said, since about three weeks ago when I hit about 80 subs on my channel, I started getting phone calls, and I am busier than ever with clients. So with only 80 subscribers, but he's getting a lot of views because he's following this formula. And Erica says, I'm already booking clients from YouTube. It wasn't even in my marketing plan yet, but it's randomly happening. So just from following this process, these results are happening. So if you guys follow this process step by step, it will make a change in your business, and it will cut down on what you're spending in your advertising bud budget. So the top five content ideas to start using right now on social media, and is particularly in video. Customer testimonials, using those on Instagram and on Facebook, because those are the places where people want to refer things to their friends. So those are a great place to, to talk about the results that you're getting for people. Home education and tutorials, put those on YouTube. Recipes, cleaning, life hacks, Facebook, Instagram. Sneak peek or home walkthrough, doing those on live streams is a great way to garner more interest. And community information, sharing the information around a project or your business and being involved in the community because those are the people that are going to turn into your customers. So I want you to put this into action. So I'm providing you with a little starter kit. Uh, I've given you my YouTube SEO checklist, video editing cheat sheet, video equipment guide, and my content calendar. And you can grab it all at that link, so if you want to take a photo of it. It is case sensitive, so make sure everything's lowercase. Um, but you guys can get started now. So you now have your video blueprint. You also know how to install a toilet and light a pilot light. So you are welcome. <laughs> Thank you, guys.